Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Coffee in the Word. Mm. Ah, first sip of the day. That's good stuff. My apologies. I'm running a little bit late this morning. I uh, slept in. We did about four hours of yard work in this Texas heat and humidity, and it just zapped me. So, anyway, this morning, oh, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope and pray that you're all doing well this morning. Uh, the first reading, uh, we're going to, well, let me tell you, we, there's a lot on Sunday mornings. So, uh, we're going to 2 Samuel, and then we have a reading in Psalms, and then there'll be a, uh, a reading from the Wisdom of Solomon. And then Psalm 30, and then 2 Corinthians, and then the Gospel of Mark. So let's get started. So, first reading, 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1, and then it skips down to 17 through 27. So here we go. And as always, may God bless the reading of His Word. So here we go. All right. After the death of Saul, when David had returned from defeating the Amalekites, David remaining two days in Ziglag, <clears throat> David intoned his lamentation over Saul and his son Jonathan. He ordered that the song of the bow be taught to the people of Judah. It is written in the book of Jashar, he said. Your glory, O Israel, lies slain upon the high places. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath. Proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice the daughters of the uncircumcised will exult. You mountains of Giboa, Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor bounteous fields, bounteous fields. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul atoned with oil no more. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, nor the sword of Saul return empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and lovely, in life and in death, they were, they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you with crimson and luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of battle, Jonathan lies slain upon your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved were you to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of woman. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war perished. Mm. Next we have uh, Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. And with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. All right. Next we have a reading from the Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 1, verses 13 through 15, and then 2, 23 through 24. So here we go. God did not make death, and he does not delight in the death of the, of the living, for he created all things so that they might exist. The generative forces of the world are wholesome, and there is no destructive poison in them, and the dominion of Hades is not on earth, for the righteous is immortal, for, oh, for righteousness is immortal. For God created us for in incorruption and made us in the image of his own eternity. But through the devil's envy, death entered the world, and those who belong to his company experience it. Mm. 
Uh, you know what, there is another reading in here from Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 through 30. The steadfast of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in Him. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the soul that seeks Him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord is impo has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to, to the smiter and be filled with insults, for the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. All right. Next we have a reading. It's Psalm 30. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cry to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes in the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall not be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you have established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and may not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. All right. The New Testament lesson this morning, uh, the, the epistle lesson, the 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 through 15. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous acts of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not, not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by competing, completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their, their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who has had much did not have have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. All right. The Gospel text this morning, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogues named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet, and begged him repeatedly, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under the physicians, and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. 
Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that the power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. And while he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And when they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in to where the child was. He looked at her, at her and by her hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was twelve years of age, and this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. All right. And this is the word of the Lord. And as always on Sundays, the Revised Common Lectionary offers uh, some prayers, and I'd like to read those this morning. So, let us pray. O oh God, sustain us in the complexity of our humanity as you sustain David, playing the harp of youth, throwing stones at giant problems, loving our friends beyond wisdom, dancing worship, mourning children, breaking our hearts in psalms, and longing for warmth in our old bones. Amen. Then, Redeeming Sustainer, visit your people and pour out your strength and courage upon us, that we may hurry to make you welcome, not only in our concern for others, but by serving them generously and faithfully in your name. Amen. And companion in life and death, your love is steadfast and never ends. Our weeping may linger with night, but you give joy in the morning. Teach us with your healing grace that, restored to wholeness, we may live out our calling as your resurrection people. Amen. All right. Well, I hope and pray that you all have a fantastic day. I'm going to go ahead and sign off now. So with that, be safe, be happy, be blessed. We'll see you tomorrow on Coffee in the Word. God bless. Bye-bye.